Okay, guys, we're going to take a look at these function machines. Uh, these all say the function is the absolute value of x. Right? And for every number we plug in, we plug in a negative 9, we get a positive 9 out of the function. We plug in a positive 7, a positive 7 comes out of the function. We plug in a positive root 2, we get a negative or positive root 2 out as well. And when you plug in a negative root 2, a positive root 2 comes out. So no matter what we plug into the absolute value function, we're always going to get the positive version of that out. And that is what a linear absolute value function is. So this is saying, what number can we plug into this absolute value function to get a positive for? And we've seen earlier that if we plug in a negative number, we get the positive number out. So we could plug in a negative 4. And we've also seen if you plug in a positive number, a positive number will also come out of the function. So we have negative 4 and po uh, positive 4 are possible missing inputs. Okay. If we plug in negative 16, we're going to end up with a positive 16 and only a positive 16 because that's what an absolute value function does. Same kind of thing as the earlier one. We could plug in a negative 9 or a positive 9 because both of those will come out to be a positive 9. And for this last one, there is no solution because the output of an absolute value function should always be positive and we'll never get a negative answer. Okay. So this says, if you are given an output for this machine, how can you figure out the input we're going to set the function equal to the positive and negative numbers. And we're setting the function equal to the positive and the negative numbers. Okay. So we're going to make a graph of this function, f of x equals the absolute value of x. So I'm going to go ahead and do something like an x, y, t chart. And I'll plug in the numbers negative 5, negative 4, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. I'm plugging in a whole lot of numbers. So if you plug in negative 5, we get a positive 5 out. Same thing with the negative 4, and the negative 3, and the negative 2, and the negative 1. These would be all of our outputs. So right one, up one, put a dot, and we just keep going with this absolute value function. Okay. But it's also symmetric, so on the left side, we got to do the same thing, go up one over one in the other direction. Sorry the lines are so faint. And I'm going to use a ruler because I need to. To make this into a straight line. So um, what can we say about this graph? Uh, first off, it's all positive numbers. Okay, there are only positive numbers. It's made up of straight lines, so it's linear. It changes from decreasing to increasing.
which implies that this has a lowest point, which we've called a minimum. We also have an x-intercept and a y-intercept. That would be right there at the minimum. Okay. So today we're going to look at how to shift this graph around. So it says, as you did with parabolas, we're going to list all possible types of transformations. And for each transformation, we're going to show the graph and its equation. Okay. So the first one we can talk about is a horizontal shift. So we could do a y equals the absolute value of x minus h for h being some number. So for example, if we did y is the absolute value of x minus 2, let's take a look at that graph and see what happens. Okay. So there's our graph. I'll give you a little time to get that down. So our former one was on the vertex, or on the origin, but we're going to shift right two spaces. So shift right two, put a dot. And we're still going to follow that same rise over run pattern. Up one over one, put a dot. And it's symmetric, so we have to do the same on the other side. Up one over one, put a dot. Same thing on the other side. Not using a ruler anymore, we're going for it. Okay. So there's our horizontal shift. We could also take a look at our vertical shift. Okay. The vertical shift would follow a y equals the absolute value of x plus k. Notice how this is on the outside of the absolute value function, which means it's how we handle a vertical shift. So we have the absolute value of x plus 2. Let's see how that would work. So again, we'll make our graph. And we're going to start by shifting up to, that is now our minimum point. And we go up one over one, put a dot in each direction, up one over one to make our absolute value function graph. Okay. And the last thing we can do is we could either stretch or compress. I'll just write stretch because I'm running out of time and space. So if y equals the a times the absolute value of x. We could do y equals 2 times the absolute value of x for our answer.
Remember how we said this is a linear absolute value function? Well, that implies it's a line, and a line implies there's a slope. So our slope is going to be 2 over 1. So from our starting point, we go up 2 over 1, put a dot in either direction. Up 2 over 1, put a dot in either direction. And we still have that V shape. It's now just more narrow. And similarly, the same thing would happen when we had a fraction. It would get wider instead of more narrow. So the general formula for an absolute value function would be y equals a. Actually, we'll call it m for slope. y equals m times x minus h plus k. Kind of like a vertex. We're just using m to represent slope, because that's how you guys have seen slope for pretty much all your life. Okay. So we have to use this to write an equation of the absolute value of the graph below. So let's go ahead and put our equation down. y equals m, absolute value of x minus h, plus k. Let's start with our slope. Remember, slope is equal to rise over run. Slope equals rise over run. Okay. So we're going to count our rise. From the vertex, we're going to go down one, two spaces. And then we run to the right one. So this slope would equal negative 2 over 1, which would reduce to negative 2. So negative 2 would be on the outside of my absolute value brackets in front. Kind of like a parabola. It's facing downward, so you know there should be a negative in front. Okay. Next, in our absolute value brackets, we have h. But we need to take a look at where we're moving horizontally from the origin. Okay. To get to our point right here, which is 1, 2, we had to move right one space. Now, I know usually we're used to this being positive 1, but we need to make this a negative 1. Okay. You're going to do the opposite of the x value because 1 is the number that you have to plug into this function to get 0. So that's why instead of positive 1, we do a negative 1, because that's the number we need to plug in. Then plus k. k is the value on the outside of our function. That is our height, which is 2 of our well maximum point. And there's our graph, our equation, sorry. There's the equation of our graph. Okay, so part B says without graphing, we need to determine the x and y intercepts of the graph. So remember, the y-intercept, that's where x is equal to 0. So 4 fifths times the absolute value of 0 minus 2 minus 2. That would be 4 fifths times the absolute value of negative 2 minus 2. absolute value of 2, negative 2 is a positive 2, so 4 fifths times 2 minus 2. That gives us 8 fifths minus 2 as a fraction, that would be 10 fifths, which is negative 2 fifths. So it's somewhere 
on the graph right there. Remember, that is our y-intercept, where we cross the y-axis. That's not necessarily our minimum or our maximum. Remember, our x-intercept is where y equals 0, and we solve. So 0 equals 4 fifths absolute value of x minus 2, minus 2. And we're going to solve it like we usually do. I'll zoom in a little bit to help out. So first things first, we're going to add 2 to both sides. So 2 equals 4 over 5, absolute value of x minus 2. We're going to multiply both sides by 5 fourths. That's how we get rid of a fraction. We flip and multiply. So times 5 fourths on both sides. 5 times 2 is 10. This is 10 over 4 equals. Those would cancel. And we're left with the absolute value of x minus 2. And remember, from here, we get two options. We get x minus 2 equals positive 10 fourths, and x minus 2 equals negative 10 fourths. Because okay. the absolute value, remember, you can plug in a negative or a positive to get this answer out here. So we add 2 to both sides. Okay. And minus adding some fractions, that would be 18 fourths, so reduces to 9 half. Add 2 to both sides, and that would be a negative 1 half. Okay. So our x intercepts are positive 9 halves, which is about 4 and a half, and negative 1 half. So we have determined the y-intercepts and the x-intercepts. Okay, but now if we sketch the point, our equation said we're going to shift right to, down to. So right to, down to, put a dot. And you can see our function already connecting our x and y intercept on the left, our minimum, and our x intercept on the right. There's our absolute value function. And that's, I believe, what you need to know about absolute value functions. Basically the same as quadratic functions. You just have to shift them. Okay. All right. Um, I'm going to give you guys a little time to work on your 914 assignment. And then uh, we'll go ahead and go over lesson 921.